You know, not to be dramatic, but this one setting in Pro Tools might be ruining all your mixes. All right, this is gonna be a shorty video, so I'm gonna keep it quick. But the basic idea here is, you know, a lot of mixing is all about gain staging. If you don't have proper gain staging, you might have distortion where you don't want it to be. You might have more noise in the sound where you don't want it to be. Again, sometimes we introduce these things on purpose, but sometimes it can come into play and become a problem if we don't have proper gain staging. So this is something that I see a lot with my students, with beginners to Pro Tools. So if you're kind of new to Pro Tools, you might not know about this setting yet. And this is kind of why Pro Tools can be kind of hard for people at first when they're first starting out because there are so many settings that can get changed easily that can be different from system to system. And if you're not aware of them and you're not likely to notice them, then they can cause trouble for you. So let me show you my session. So I have this YouTube example session. It's nothing special. It's just a bunch of splice samples that I threw on the timeline here. So I'll just play a little bit so we can get an idea of what I have here. <laughs> So that's it. That's what we're going to be listening to for our example here. So you'll notice here I have different settings here for my volume fader for each of these tracks. So this track is at negative 3.9, negative 9.9, negative 17.1. And if we do command equals to switch to our mix window, you'll notice that we have the same values here. So these faders are linked to those volume faders in the edit window, right? So we have negative 3.9, negative 9.9, negative 17.1, and negative 16.6. So here's where the setting comes into play. So in audio, we have things called pre fader and post fader. And so with pre fader, what it's going to be showing you or operating on, it kind of depends on the context for how we're seeing it, is going to be the audio that's before the fader changes things, right? So with our faders, if I do option click here, it's alt click on windows, it'll bring us to zero. And that is no change. The fader is not changing the audio at all. If I then raise my fader, it increases the level, right? So it's like raising the volume, it's akin to raising the volume. And if I bring it down from zero, it's like lowering the volume, right? So if we're talking about seeing audio here that is pre-fader, it's as if my fader is at zero. Just keep that in mind. It's as if the fader is not in play, right? Whereas if we're seeing things post-fader, for example, if I have this down at negative 20.6, if we're, for example, seeing our audio in a post-fader setting, it would be much lower because of this fader. So whereas if it was hitting around zero before, so up towards the top of our meter, if we have the fader at negative 20, it's gonna be hitting closer to around negative 20, right? So post-fader, we're seeing the effects of our fader, and pre-fader, we're seeing the audio before that fader change. So the actual setting here, I'm going to do command equals to switch to my edit window. If I go to the options menu up here, you can see it in the menu. Let me find it really quickly here. So here it is, pre-fader metering. So sometimes you might have pre-fader metering on. So that's when it's checked off. So let me check it off and show you what it looks like on. So when it's on, it has that checkbox. And when it's off, it's how we just showed it. So no checkbox. So pre-fader metering, it's a setting, it's binary. So it's either on or off. So it's either in pre-fader metering mode when it's on or or like it is right now, it's in post fader. And so the way this trips my students up, right, is sometimes they might accidentally see things in pre fader metering mode. Like if it's on, I just clicked it. So now it's on, you can see that. And if we, for example, take this and we hit play, let's look. So like this track, it's hitting at negative 2.4 ish. Whereas if we switch back to post fader metering and then we click on it and now we hit play, we see that it's actually hitting at negative 18 in our mix, right? That's what we're actually hearing in the mix. The volume fader is still affecting things, but basically if you're in pre-fader metering mode, you're not gonna see the effect of those volume faders. So let me hit play again. This is with pre-fader metering on. Let me click on this, hit play. So see how we're seeing it. So see how it's actually displaying it differently. So let me hit command equals and I'm gonna hit play here and I'm gonna actually bring my fader up to zero on this one, right? Cause this is the one we're kind of focusing on right now. And you'll see that since we're in pre-fader metering mode, this is not gonna change. <laughs> We hear it, right? We hear it much louder because we did actually change the fader, but the meter is displaying the same value. So let me do Command Z and hit play. 
So this can really throw you off if you're in the mixing stage, for example, and you want to see all the changes that you're making and how they're affecting the mix. If you're in pre-fader metering mode, it can really throw you off. So then the question is, when do we tend to use pre-fader metering mode? So oftentimes when we're using pre-fader metering mode is when we're tracking, right? Because when you're tracking, you really want to see where the meters are hitting. You want to make sure you're not clipping while tracking because that's one of the hardest things to undo. That's one of the hardest times to undo clipping distortion, right? So when we're tracking, we often want to see the signal that's coming in from our preamp and we want to make sure that it's at a healthy signal level. It's not super quiet. It's not like just living way down here. And we also want to see if it clips and distorts, right? So often we will turn this option on so it's checked off like it is now. And then the benefit of that is that we will always see what's coming in from the preamp while recording and we can start doing a preliminary mix and moving our faders around, but it's not going to mess with the actual view of what we're recording. So we can kind of focus on both things at once. It allows us to multitask a bit while recording. And then the trick for that is what I would recommend doing is going to options and then checking this off so it's not checked off anymore, right? Going out of pre-fader metering mode for mixing so that you can actually see where things are heading. And with that, I would just keep in mind that like if you're mixing, it's good to make sure that you're not clipping before you make changes, before you add plugins. You want to make sure you're not clipping or distorting. Things are at a healthy level before you do the next step. So like for this, right, I'm clipping with when I had it at zero, when I had this up at zero, it was clipping. And this might not be too big a problem, but if, for example, I was adding a plugin and the plugin was causing this track itself to clip when the fader's at zero, I might adjust the plugin before I brought this down so I would know that I am not distorting on the plugin level and then just masking it by bringing the fader down, if that makes sense. And there is a little bit of leeway with things in Pro Tools. The biggest thing to avoid is clipping on the master fader. There's a bit more leeway in the rest of the system. But essentially, you know, the big thing to do with the clipping and the distortion issue is to use your ears and listen and make sure you're not distorting. And so that's the basic idea. What I would recommend doing is just taking a look here, checking that you're not in pre-fader metering mode unless you're tracking and kind of just keeping that in your toolkit of things to check, of things to be kind of conscious of when you're going from tracking to mixing and vice versa too, right? Like sometimes we do a little mixing and then we go back to tracking. Another thing that you can do is you can kind of just not go into this mode if you don't want to, like just never check off pre-fader or metering. A lot of the time when I'm recording, I will just kind of be recording and whatever track I'm recording, let's say I'm recording this track, I will just leave it at zero. And then I bring it into the mix and worry about it later. You know, I just leave it at zero. It keeps things simple. The other thing that I often do is I will just monitor my levels on the preamp itself. I will look at the meters on the preamp itself. I always listen very carefully while recording and it, it works out fine. So that's another thing you can do is if you don't want to worry about it, you can just leave this at zero um, and not worry about it. So yeah, pre-fader metering, keep an eye on it, have a look, see where it is, be aware of it. A lot of the time with beginners, with students that I work with, I see them making moves on their mix and being confused as to why the levels are not changing. And so whenever that happens, I do go and check this pre-fader metering setting and make sure that it's not on while they're mixing. It can really throw you off, especially if you're not used to listening for distortion and stuff. It could really mess up your mix if you're not careful because you're not seeing what you're doing. You're flying blind in some ways, right? So I would check that out. And I think that's about it for today. As usual, this video is sponsored by me. If you don't want to deal with any of this stuff and you want to work with a professional producer or engineer on your music, please feel free to hit me up. It's Kato Noise. Com. And if you go to my website, you can hit the get started button. There are like three or four questions about your music on there. You can fill that out and it'll take you to a calendar where you can book a call with me. It's a no obligation call. It's a Zoom call. We can also do a phone call if you prefer. Just let me know. And we'll talk about your music and see if we might be a good fit. So feel free to check that out if you might want to work together. And other than that, check out my Patreon. It's patreon.com slash Noise. We have a Discord server we're hanging out on. We have a book club on the Discord server. That's been my favorite thing. There's some early release content, some additional content on my website. So check that out if you feel so inclined. I think you can join for as little as a dollar a month. And other than that, I come out with new videos every Wednesday. And thank you so much for hanging out. Okay. I have these silver nails on and I really like them. Like, check this out. Check this out. It's fun. I've, um, I've been playing with my nail game. Anyway, it's silly. I don't know. It was just Halloween on 
what day was Halloween? Friday? I think Halloween was Friday. And I was at a music educator conference that was a lot of fun. And I just flew back last night and now it's Sunday and I'm hanging out and I'm going to do some stuff. I got to do some errands. I got to do a little more work outside of the YouTube stuff. And then it's my grandma's birthday party tonight. So I'm going to go do that and that should be fun. Okay. I hope you're all doing well. I'll talk to you later. I'm going to run away. All awkward. Okay. <laughs> Bye.